Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to tie another streamer and this is a classic one. This is the Royal Coachman Bucktail. The hook that I have in the vise, what, we're, what you're going to need is a streamer hook. I'm going to use this Lively Legs uh, lip splitter and is number 472 size 8 and it's a streamer and it is a three extra long hook we're also going to need some peacock hurl and we're also going to need some floss red floss and then for the wing we're going to use either calf tail white calf tail or white bucktail all the bucktail streamer but even in the book it says to use calf tail and lastly our tail is going to be golden pheasant tippets I'm going to use black thread now this fly you can weight it if you if you'd like you could actually even put a cone on there or a bead on there I'm not going to for some reason these uh, the Royal Coachman streamer bucktail I just like it better with no weight on it I usually use it in small streams where there's brookies and brownies mixed because what this actually looks like is like a fin of a brown trout and we're going to start off by putting that base of thread on the hook. Again, just start wrapping and then wrap over itself. Hold your thread at a 45 degree angle. And you will get those nice touching turns. Keep that thread tight. I can see I got a couple little spaces there. It's not a big deal though. And we're going to bring that all the way back to halfway between the point of the hook and the barb, which I bent down. And that's about it there. Just inside the barb is, is good. And I broke that off and I got a little bit of... Just put a little bit of flame to that. Now the first thing we're going to put on is our tail. We're going to take our golden pheasant crest and depending on, you can see this color is a little bit lighter than this and I have a third one here and this is really a dark color. So what we're going to do is just take a single feather and I'm going to take one of the smaller ones I actually pulled off two. Okay, one was a short one. Just get rid of that. Now, if you see this, we're going to pull away some of those loose and the ones that don't have the black mark on them. Now, we're going to take this small pheasant crest, and I'm going to kind of roll them in on itself or fold it in half. And we're going to tie that in just in back of our second black. I'm going to pull that a little bit. There we go. I'm going to put a wrap under the tail. And then tie that down. Now I'm going to leave this on here because I want to keep a nice level body and it doesn't matter if it goes around the around the hook shank there a little bit but as long as we get to keep a, a level more level body you can see right here that it's fatter and then it got to the stem so it actually went down a little bit we tighten that in there a little bit now I, I zoomed it in a little bit and you can see there's a little bit of a taper there uh, we're going to bring our thread back and that taper we can take care of with our thread right now or we can go ahead and 
take care of that when we put our tinsel on. But before we put the tinsel on, we're going to take Peacock Hurl. And I'm going to take a pair of those. And the reason we use two instead of one is because they're strength in numbers. If you use three or four, it would be even stronger. But two is about the acceptable or the norm for using these. I'm going to trim off a little bit of that tip to get rid of the really fine barbs, leaving a longer, a longer tag end. We're going to tie these in. Now we're going to wrap this, but before we wrap this, it might be a good idea to take a little bit of head cement. Not much. Just put a little head cement on there. Kind of take that all the way around. That'll give you a little bit of more security on your peacock hurl. We're going to take our pheasant tail and we're going to wrap this. Be careful of the hook point. And I'm going to back it off because they split. Hold them together. See, I just moved it around that hook point and they split. I'm just going to continue with it and they'll come back together. You can actually go back over it if you want it a little thicker. Now those, those peacock curl are nice and tight together. And I'm going to come up to my thread and we're covering about one third the hook shank. We're going to give that a couple, two, three wraps. I'm going to take my thread up forward. I'm making big open turns here. Put a couple wraps right on top. You trim that off. I'm just trying to tie down some of that hurl fuzz. And at the same time, I'm leveling off that area. Now I got it pretty level there. Now I'm going to take the uh, red floss and this is a two strand right here that I grabbed and I'm going to take about a foot of it maybe four or five uh, wraps of the spool and then before I use it I'm going to run it across my tongue and that just helps to helps you to manage it. I'm going to tie it in at this front part. Smaller tag. And now I'm going to wrap it back. I'm going to actually use my rotating feature. Nice tight wraps. Something's getting in my way over there. I'm going to come right up onto the peacock hurl. And then I'm going to go back again. And I'm going to unwrap this thread. I didn't put it on my bobbin cradle. As you can see, it came up. And we're just going to continue to wrap this. Some nice tight wraps. And bring that forward. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. I'm going to give it maybe three wraps on top of it. And 
I have three or four. And we're going to fold it back and we're going to put a couple of wraps right on top of that. Take our scissors and remove the excess. I actually have enough for another one. I think I took more than a foot. Just put that in my material clip so I don't lose it. I'm going to take a little bit of the head cement once again. I actually put a little bit on the end of the uh, floss there. And the main reason for that is I plan to go back on the floss with the peacock curl. So we're going to take two more peacock curl. Get a good pair here. This package of peacock curl wasn't the greatest. I, I think I've said before this package of peacock curl would be great for stripping the peacock curl. It's not heavy on the hurl. We're going to tie that down. I'm going to come back slightly on that. And a couple reasons I'm coming back slightly. Just so I have a nice clean uh, transaction from one material to the next. And the other reason being that we want to put a decent amount of hurl on this front part and it's split not a big deal we want to put a decent amount of hurl on the front part because when we put the wing and the collar in it kind of hides a lot of it so i want to go back a little bit just so i can make sure that we can see some of that otherwise there's really no sense in putting the hurl on the front Fold it back and put three wraps on top of that, three or four. You don't have to use 15, 16 wraps on everything you're securing. Now for our collar, I'm just going to use a strong saddle hackle, get a big bag of them here, and you want a brown or coachman brown hackle, which is a ginger, a darker ginger. And just let me get these all back in the bag here. There we go. Here I have my hackle, and you can see one side is very light and one side is nice. I'm going to use the tie it in from the bottom. So I'm going to kind of measure how long they're going to be off the bottom. And I'm going to take it at about there. I'm going to fold these back and I'm going to snip them and we're well on our way to a good crew cut right there. Now I'm going to take my, I'm going to trim them with the crew cut from the thicker side and what this does is sometimes your scissors pushes a couple of the barbs out of the way and if you do it in this, this way the natural setup of the barb is pushing the barbs into the scissors. Just trim that down a little bit. So we want a few there. And I'm even going to leave one or two barbs exposed there. And I'm going to clean that up. Bring that up to about halfway to the eye. Now I'm going to pick that, pull that up. When I tied it in, I tied it with the back side or the concave side to the shank. I'm going to bring all of the hackle to one side of the stem just by going from top to bottom from the outside to the side that you want to put them. There we go. We got a lot of them on there. And we're going to wrap this. Get yourself some nice tight wraps there. And 
and three looks pretty good for this fly. I'm going to hold my hackle at that 90 degree from the hook shank. Once you get a couple of them on there, you can kind of let go, but you still want to hold that at that 90 degree. And I'm going to pull everything back and I'm going to wrap in front of it. I'm going to remove my I'm going to remove my hackle. Take your cuticle trimmer and poke and snip. Now it's going back a little bit, but I'm going to make it go back just a little bit more by taking my thread and going maybe one or two thread widths back on it. And then maybe three. Okay, so now it's going back. Now we're ready for the wing. Now, like I said before, the wing could either be calf hair or a uh, bucktail. This calf hair is about the right length, so I'm going to use the calf hair. If I hold that there, you see, got a nice, nice length to it there. I'm going to take my clump and trim that off. We're going to hold this and pull out any loose ones, which quite a bit. We don't want to, you don't need to stack these cap, this calf hair. It's pretty consistently the same size. And we're going to lay that right on top to measure. And we want our, our tail to go just beyond, or our wing to go just beyond the tail. I'm holding that. I'm going to trim this before I tie it on. We're going to hold that in place. We're going to tie it on. Get a couple of softer loops on there first, and then you can tighten it. You know, hold my hackles out of the way at the same time. And we can just wrap this head. You can see it's sliding off there. Sometimes it's a good idea to, to uh, trim that calf tail at a bit of an angle. You know, at a, at a slant going that way. And then you won't necessarily get that slide off. Just clean up that head there. Don't worry if it's sticking up a little bit. The, the water will control. We'll take care of that and get that down. But even sticking up that little bit is pretty good. But if you wanted to get that to not stick up, just go ahead and come up on, on it a little bit and take some lighter wraps first. Just to help it lay down. And I'm going to back that off because I lost my hackle. I want to keep that hackle down the bottom there. And I'm going to bring my thread up front and I'm going to go ahead and give it the whip finish. Tug that in there nice and tight. Poke and snip. Now we're going to take some head cement again. We're going to clean our brushes off, but we're not going to clean it off like we're, we're putting it on a dry fly. We want a decent amount on there, but we don't we also don't want it to drip down into the eye. We're going to go ahead and go right around with this. And one of the reasons we want to go right around also is the calf tail you'll find is it's a little bit slippery. And if you don't get it in there just just right and and tight when you're tying it, it it'll pull right out. And here we have the Royal Coachman Bucktail or Calf Tail. 
Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors and let them know I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase this or any flies that I make, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym and if you don't see it there just send me a message of what you want and we'll figure things out and most of all i thank you very much for watching my videos